You're welcome back to hashtag the key points live on TV3 and 3FM. My name is Jifa Bampu. So almost 30 years ago, a multi-party democracy birthed the Democratic People's Party, the DPP, uh, the Egle Party, every Ghanaian living everywhere, the PNC, the People's National Convention, uh, the NDC, the National, well, the National Democratic Congress came much later though, in uh, 1996, the NPP, the New Patriotic Party. It also rebirthed the CPP also later and almost three decades down the line the NPP together with the NDC are Ghana's most dominant parties emerging the most successful both in and out of government and opposition because they've been able to sustain themselves uh, during those periods and of all these parties that I listed they are the only ones who've seem to do that quite well but the NPP over the week um, over the week marked 29 years of uh, party have they met the aspirations of Ghanaians their uh, slogan is development in freedom have they met our aspirations our democracy what is the path to inclusion for the next generation of young people? Our panel are uh, Yao Bwabing Asamwa. He is a director of communications for the MPP. He's a private legal practitioner as well. Uh, Felix Kwachi Fusu, who is a former deputy communications minister under the NDC administration. Dr. Seydou Alidu, who is a senior lecturer with the Department of Political Science. And I want to welcome you gentlemen uh, to my first show the key points um, much appreciated for coming in but first let me start off by taking some preliminary comments on the outcome of the sputnik v vaccine probe where we it has emerged that we've paid some 11 million uh, sorry 16 million ghana cities to a third party contractor sheikh maktoub and the minister had indicated under all that no payment had been made certainly um, not good news Coming up, I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Kwachi Fosu. Should the minister tender in his resignation? Well, thanks, Jifa, and congratulations on the hosting of your first show. Thank you. Uh, let me also extend some warm greetings to my folks at the Abra Sebo Kwamankese constituency. I hope to join them shortly after this program for a number of engagements. Um, you have quite a, a large viewership base there, and uh, They've indicated in no uncertain terms that I need to acknowledge <laughs> their viewership. Uh, if I see, I am not surprised by the outcome of this investigation because I quite frankly think that the investigation was not required and that there, were, there was sufficient evidence even before the investigation began for President Akufadu to have taken action against his health minister. But unfortunately, we have a president who does not appear to be bothered in the least <laughs> about the uh, misuse and uh, embezzlement and misapplication of the public purse. Oh, and, so, and so we we'll do absolutely nothing. <laughs> embezzlement? Absolutely nothing <laughs> about it. He will not hold any member of his government to account <laughs> to the extent that that person remains a member of his party. And so we have to go through the circuitous route of a probe by parliament. Now, fortunately, this probe was held in the full glare of the Ghanaian public. So we all heard what transpired. So even before the report was written, we were quite familiar with what the issues were. But we didn't know that 16 million... Yes, I mean, those, those, those who knew, knew. Indeed, indications had been put out there that that had happened. In fact, the finance minister is on record to have granted an interview to the Norwegian outlet, VG, that first broke the story, <laughs> that he paid some money. So it was not uh, a new information... Uh, in the straightest sense of the word. Of course, you could argue that many were hearing it for the first time yesterday. But the point must be made that whereas the findings are not surprising, <laughs> it is an inaction, unwillingness on the part of the president to move to protect the public purse and sanction offending officials of his government. <laughs> that, is a, that is a difficulty. Because there are about four different violations in this instance. The first one is Article 1815, which makes it clear that if you are engaged in any international business transaction, you need to go to Parliament for approval. Now, the minister says because we were in an emergency and COVID was breathing down his neck and all that, he couldn't do so. See, it is not excusable because of who the minister is. The minister, if I'm not mistaken, and Mr. Boabin can correct me if I'm wrong, 
It's at least a three or four term MP. I'll yeah. correct you if you withdraw embezzlement. Because there's been <laughs> no, I'll explain. I'll explain. Oh, no, no. I'll, I'll, it's, it's not. Why? That's why? Really there's, multiple, <laughs> there's multiple evidence of that. So I, I'm surprised that Mr. Okay, Wabi but you were mentioning, so yeah. just quickly mentioned Azali. the four violations. Azali. You mentioned violating but the rules regarding international of transactions. We also violated sections 40 and 41 of Act 663, the Public Procurement Act. Mm -hmm. Then, it is obvious based on his denials before the committee, that he lied on oath when he said that no monies had been paid. And then... Not seeking cabinet approval. Finally, not seeking cabinet approval. Because it is, it is unimaginable that for something of this scale, the Minister of Health would, on his own volition, without real cost to Parliament, without real cost to the President, make any efforts to purchase these, uh, what do you call it? vaccines when the president had been the driving force behind it in the first place. It was the president who first announced that we were going to purchase vaccines. No. So these violations call for the strictest sanctions. And because of the precedence that we've had in this country, it is completely mind boggling that the president does not appear to be interested at all in sanctioning the, the health minister, especially because this same president has been quick to drag his political opponents to court over more frivolous matters. Look, Article 1815. For many people who do not know, is the reason why there was even an issue with the OYOME payment. It is because of Article 185. The Supreme Court ruled that because of that violation, the money should be refunded. Otherwise, Mr. OYOME would have worked free for no known violation. Okay, so now, when you come to the PPA violation, the reason why the Electoral Commission chairperson, Mrs. Charlotte, said was removed was because of procurement breaches. Indeed, there are about three or four different former government officials standing trial because of procurement violations. In fact, they all had those, to resign because in, of absolutely, the indeed, indeed, the NCA officials who went to jail, part of the reason was alleged procurement okay, violations. Okay, so I, I think you made so, it, but he didn't embezzle the money. Well, I have not said, I have not, you said I have he, not spoken he, about embezzlement in this talking, particular instance. Uh -huh. I'm speaking in general terms about there's, there's multiple evidence okay, of embezzlement. Okay, so let me bring in uh, yeah. uh, Mr. Bwabing <coughs> Asamwa because certainly it's always fair that the president wants to stand by his men. But for these violations mentioned in the report, certainly maybe time is running out for the health minister. Thank you very much, Chifa. I, I'm very happy that you've had him withdraw the allegation of embezzlement. I mean, that is extremely serious. It's a proven criminal situation, which is not the case here. No such thing has happened. And uh, he just lost an election seven months ago. So the greetings to his constituency should slow down a bit. Oh, wow. In two years, you can't start. <laughs> In two years, you can't start. <laughs> <laughs> but then, I see two things that have happened. One, that Article 1815 has been established by the committee as having been breached, and that public procurement rules in terms of sole sourcing. But then the committee also said that the post ratification process was taking place. It had been submitted to PPP. Now, in all of this, you have a very experienced minister. Mamenu is a very, very experienced politician, minister, MP minister, was an MP in opposition as well. He's a chartered accountant, from yes. what I so, understand. So, 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 for the benefit of the doubt, he says he relied on two legs. Leg one being that he believed he was within his rights, uh, looking at the situation and the governing rules now on the restriction of impositions. And that the second leg was that he stood on the verge of saving lives or losing lives. And it wasn't an easy time mentally for him. And so the processes required, the normal processes required, we are not in a normal period. Uh, we are all aware of our new normal. And that within that context, human as he is, experienced as he is, hmm, even he, experienced as he is, was under that kind of pressure where he needed to procure vaccines to save lives. People were dying and, and vaccines were becoming difficult to acquire. And therefore, he believed that given the frame of the period, working within the Imposition of Restrictions Act, which gives you some leeway to operate in a sense, he thought he was doing the right thing and that he always believed he could go back to Parliament and have it ratified. For me, for me, 
it's not running away about the president and embezzlement and all that. I think it's a very constructive report. It's about drilling down probably to 185, 1815 and determine that perhaps this is the time to really, really legislate it by an act of parliament. So we set out the parameters clearly. Because I've been thinking, I, I saw the report last night. Suppose he had gone for emergency ratification in parliament. I have been there before. They would have overturned the rules and done everything in probably less than two, three hours. Mm -hmm. Which means he comes in by certificate of urgency. It is read, it is, uh, it is passed through the three readings at once, and then it's approved. So after approval, and these things, Turn up later. All the uh, uh, issues in there with price and etc. Turn up later. Is it Parliament's liability or is it his liability? But at least the leadership of the House who represent the people would know. Yes, and, that's and, what I'm and, saying. And then at least we all know the intent yes, behind it. Exactly. There will be no perception of whether this was an opportunity for a create loot and share because there are three different entities in relation to this Patnik V contract. Yeah, there's the Sheikh Maktoub, there's the Ghana entity Yifa. that was, and then a third one. If I landed, it would have been easier because why well, now we now presuming that there was intent. No, I'm not saying there is. There is. I'm not so, saying so. So, so if you That's rushed I'm saying to Parliament, least, there would be no intent. Why can't we give him the benefit of the doubt that there was intent to also save lives? That's why he rushed. Okay, sure. Yes, there was intent to save lives. That's why until we establish culpability for any uh, underhand dealings or whether that was a driving motive, we can't presume. No, that. not on specifically his part. Yes. But he could have been uh, hoodwinked by people seeking to create a scheme um, with a wrong impression that they can procure when they couldn't. Now we have paid this so, money. So, so Mr. Kwachi Fosu said it's, it's not new. But I guess many of us would have hinged on the, the minister's word that no payment had been done. It was a document presented at the media budget review by the finance minister or page 101 or so, appendix 4E, that indicated that payment had yeah, been the done. Ministry, the ministry has actually written, uh, saying that at the time the minister spoke, he wasn't aware. And again, I think he should be given the benefit of the doubt because they have attached all the documentation after. All the documentation has been mobilized and has been attached and demonstrated there. And they stated clearly that the minister, at the time he was giving evidence on this matter was not aware that the payment had been made. Okay, that's so, fair so point. But, what, but how then do you respond to mm. people who talk about a lack of fairness where certain ministers or public officials are removed from their positions, are prosecuted because they engage in these violations? This Yet a, this, the health minister is trying to pursue this is nine emotion. Lives. This is emotion. Parliament on its own volition has set up an ad hoc committee. The report is going to be laid on the floor of the house. There will be a debate, both sides. And happily, this parliament is now uh, literally a <laughs> hung parliament. You have 137 facing 138, and the speaker uh, uh, on the other side. So, so I am sure whatever goes on on the floor of the house will demonstrate these other matters that you are raising here. But we can begin to compare processes otherwise without looking at clearly the individual circumstances. So I believe that, first of all, the process of the committee reviewing it. It's positive for our democracy. I believe that. Secondly, I believe that the minister should be given the benefit of the doubt to the extent that he had, they, there's no malficience or, or deliberate intent established on his part to do something untoward. His explanation may not be acceptable to you, but he is within his rights to provide that explanation in the context of the situation that we have. Now, yes, Experienced as he is, chartered accountant as he is, uh, he's run that ministry for four years. He's in his fifth year, and he's confronted by a pandemic uh, of a seriousness that we haven't seen in over 76 years, uh, since the Second World War, literally. We haven't seen anything of this magnitude impacting the entire world. And he is at the center of it as a minister of health. And then he's operating on a, a literally hour by hour basis and he has to save lives people are dying he's getting reports people are dying and so there's an opportunity to acquire vaccines vaccines are hard to come by and he takes decisions 
at the time he was taking those decisions, are we saying he sat down to look at personal interest before he took those decisions and eliminated public interest in the sense of going through the procedures? He's saying no. I was under so much stress and I believed that I was within my rights in doing what I was doing because I have been fighting this. So, so now that it's been exposed that, well, he had to have gone to Parliament, well, he had to have gone to the procurement, uh, uh, public procurement authority, he ought to have uh, consulted more than he did. And he says, well, unfortunately, I was under so much pressure, I didn't. Okay. We have a report now. It is for the Parliament, we set up the committee to debate it on the floor, for the president to listen to them and for the public to make their judgments. Okay, but I'll I'll I I'll am saying, my concluding uh, mm -hmm. position on it, I am saying that let us not ascribe malfeasance to him at this time. We can't assume that his intent was to do for the country. If we do that, we are not being fair to him. Okay. Let me come to uh, Dr. Uh, Ali Du. There are governance issues uh, that are emerging in reference to this. For some, I've heard some people say it's instructive that in the report, in spite of all that was put there, Parliament didn't make any recommendations specifically on his conduct, whether he should continue in the role or the like. Is that something that, for instance, Parliament should be looking at, or based on the, the examples that Mr. Boabi Asamoah has raised, we should look on the face of it, why he did this, and his, uh, ex his, his position was that he was seeking to prevent any more deaths from the second uh, COVID wave. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Zufa. I think uh, I want to approach this issue on three different levels. One, the context. Two, the setting. And three, the level of experience of the minister. Let's look at the context. I agree with Honorable uh, Babina Samoa that we are facing an unprecedented uh, health crisis, which has happened like for several number of years. We've never faced this kind of crisis. So, in a situation like this where vaccines are critical and in short supply at the market, every government will want to do everything possible to prevent deaths and to mitigate the sufferings of the people. So the context is, is quite dire. But the setting, we don't live in a jungle, we live in a democracy. And democracy prescribes institutions and procedure of doing everything. There are institutions, there are set laws, there are regulations govern how things should be done in, in this manner and the processes under which it should be done. Even though we, we are facing an unprecedented health crisis, when the president wanted to fight this, he had to go to parliament and seek what? The restriction of movement. Imposition of restriction. Even though the president would have just said, oh, we are facing crisis, people shouldn't come out. But he thought that we are in a democracy and I need to use the right procedure and the right mechanism to fight the crisis. And I think the minister shouldn't have lost sight of the fact that regardless of the circumstances, we are still in a democracy and the appropriate procedure and rules must be applied. My third has to do with the experience. This is not the first time minister. He has been in that, he has been a minister. I think not, this is not the first minister he's heading. He's a very experienced legislature. And he has even been a chairman of the Public Accounts Committee. Yeah. When issues of this kind, procurement breaches, and he presided over them. And in most cases, they actually have to take on assemblies and uh, public government officials who have bring these processes. So I, I don't think knowing all this and given the experience that he has, he should have acted the way that he acted. Parliament, I, I am not, I don't understand why maybe they didn't want to prescribe uh, uh, punishment or the way forward. But I think sometimes people may decide to use their conscience based on the circumstances and then, and then make a decision. To be honest with you, I think he was doing this in the interest of what? The context, what we are facing, unprecedented challenges. But that shouldn't have given him the assumption that I can do this without who calls to law. Because at the end of the day, they will apply the law to you, if you, if you, if you no matter how you try to, to save the, the, the people. So I, to, based on me, I think, sorry, from my perspective, I think the minister should do something, maybe in a yeah. dignified manner, All right. based uh, on the circumstances. Yeah, Mr. Kwachi, for sure. uh, your thoughts, because it's two things. Mr. Boabing has somewhere, and I, and I think that's a fair point, he has not embezzled any money. That was not referred to well, in the report. However, yes, the issue of his conduct 
is a, a matter. But the M it's instructive that the MPs didn't prescribe well, any punishment. I, first of all, I'm, not, I'm not sure why Mr. Samuel is uh, basically jubilating oh. over the fact that I have said but that he, I used embezzlement generally to describe a certain consistent pattern of behavior under the Akufado government. I was not specifically referring to this matter. So but, I spoke but, all but, but we, we have Well, I go, no, <laughs> let me make the point. 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 I could cite, yes, I could cite so many. Listen, I could cite so many. We don't want to just generalize it across the board. I could cite so many. So why? The Mubimpina matter. It's a clear case of embezzlement. The cash receipts matter. The, what do you call it? Even the PDS matter. There are so many of them that I could cite. But on this particular issue, you see, I don't know why Mr. Samuel again would want to make excuses for the minister. Look, what I am gleaning from all of this, and when you relate it to other things they've done under COVID, is that COVID has become an artifice that is veiling an intent, you know, to abuse the public purse for personal profit. The minister is not only very experienced. Indeed, he was deputy finance minister under President Kufour. This is some almost 16 years ago. He's been a three-term MP, if I'm not mistaken. So he's no spring chicken. He's still a member of He's no spring chicken. He, and Ms., uh, Dr. Seydou made the point that he had chaired Parliament Accounts Committee before which similar instances had come and he had judged, you know, he had sat in judgment of others who allegedly broke the procurement laws. Again, the institution that he is part of, Parliament, has adequate mechanisms to take care of emergency situations. Mr. Mbwabia Samoa said that they could do this within three hours. Now, I'm asking myself, what exceptional difference would those three hours have made in terms of the speed and dispatch that was required to address the emergency that we had with COVID? It would not have made a dent in the effort to go and procure, what do you call it, vaccines but, but, to ensure that we save lives. Yeah, but so, then if we are faced with this situation mm -hmm. after the emergency no, process, no, who takes responsibility? No, 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 listen, listen. The final point I'm making is this. That Parliament itself acknowledges that there could be emergency situations. Indeed, in matters that do not bear any semblance to emergencies, certificates of emergencies have been issued to pass laws and legislation. So, in an emergency situation, that you need that, why to use and that's the more reason why you need to use the emergency process that Parliament itself has. Even the Public Procurement Authority has room for emergency procurement, and he could have reached them to ensure that the right things were done. Now, the reason why these laws exist is to prevent exactly what has happened that public officials do not take advantage of situations like this to engage in wrongdoing and acts that are detrimental to the interests of the people of Ghana. So the excuses that are being made are not tenable. They are not acceptable. The minister knows far too much to have engaged in these fundamental and rudimentary breaches that are not acceptable. Are you Again, confident that we will retrieve the money? This well, is a we are going to have to retrieve. Is, is well, we are going to have to retrieve. Of course, to money. we are going to have to retrieve because legal processes would have to be kicked, kicked uh, started in order to ensure that. But the point that one needs to make is that this was completely avoidable. Again, the claim that Mr. Samoa makes and the minister makes that he was unaware that 16 million Ghana cities had been paid to this shake is also shocking. It is mind-boggling. Well, the, the, it is not possible. Listen, the finance listen, minister it has not, made that It is not possible. Available. It is not possible. He, look, and indeed, how did the finance minister pay? The payment emanated from the Ministry of Health. They wrote to the finance minister that they had engaged in this and that this had to happen. There was no way that the finance minister would have paid without recourse to the health minister. So what kind of ministry is Mr. Ajimamenu running that such huge sums of money can be paid in their name and he will be unaware. Indeed, if he was unaware, then it is more reason why he should have been fired yesterday. If the minister can sit in his office and say that huge sums of money, tens of millions of Ghana cities belonging to the taxpayer have been paid to an entity that he is engaged in, he is engaged with in terms of the procurement of assets, and he is not aware, then it is more reason why he should be removed from his post immediately. Okay, but, Mr. But, but, but you see, okay, before, so before you he comes in, up. before he comes <laughs> in, again, before I made a point in my earlier submission that there are people standing trial for similar breaches, some of them cited the existence of internal ratification mechanisms. If we can at the stay PPE, with this. At PPE. Yeah, okay. And yet, and yet, this. And yet <laughs> courts have sentenced them to prison terms. Indeed, we removed the whole head of the commission, an independent Yes, but he, he has addressed that point already. No, no, no. no, no, no. Not that no, 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 it's a no, case no. by case no, basis. There's no case, by, listen, this there's no case by case basis. The point is that <laughs> for you to even determine whether there's merits in this process to remove the minister. You need to kickstart the process. The president is unwilling to kickstart the process. Indeed, he should have fired him. The day he went to parliament and admitted that 
He was not thinking straight. Uh, would you, in these matters. Would you, what would you, you allow us to engage? What would you have preferred? Let's say that minister now. was uh, was honest. Would you have preferred? No, honest about what? Listen, listen. If he you was admit, no, that this Jifa, was the pressure. If you admit that, that he took this if you were, decision listen, because Jifa, of the pressure, there were these decisions Jifa, to say that that's what you Jifa, and Jifa, I. Jifa, there are thirty million Ghanaians. To the extent that it was Mr. Jima Menu who was picked to head that ministry, it meant that the president believed. That he had the capacity and competence and know how and knowledge so, so can we also to run way? the ministry. Okay. So now, if it turns out, no, let, let, find out, if it turns out that he did not possess these qualities, he has no business remaining there. Okay. Now, what Thank he has done much. has so potentially cost us 16 million Ghana. How do you go and pay? It's not yes, how do you go and pay for something? Well, we Listen, have a word. How do you go and buy the pay? How do you pay for something so that you are not absolutely sure? Because now the concern is can we retrieve these monies? It's very interesting the way. Ajma Menu's track record, political history, public service has come up. And that is the very reason why I'm saying that it is credible when he says that he was confused. <laughs> this is a man who has chaired the Public Accounts Committee, ranking member on the Public Accounts Committee and chair, I think, at some point. And he tells you that knowing how these things work, his engagement with the public sector and all that, he tells you that at a certain point in time, given the responsibility, he had to act this way. And he comes before the entire world and tells you that, look, where I was, I didn't even have room to look beyond these points. So the point I am making is that, yes, the NDC can use to uh, take this and run with it and compare all the previous trials in the country and otherwise. That's their business. The real business we have in this particular case is that you have a very experienced person who has conducted himself in a certain way against certain institutional norms of which he was very, very aware. Can we then conclude that it was deliberate? That he intended that money for his personal benefit? Because that is what the MDC are implying. And my position is that it cannot be the case that with his experience, with his knowledge of procedural requirements, because everything he did would come out in the end. Isn't it, was all, it, isn't, isn't it all the more reason that this is totally mm. unacceptable. Mm. I th it, it may then be that the minister would look inward and say that, look, maybe I shouldn't continue on this tangent because then many will now want to even find out in the previous four years mm. what other breaches mm. may have happened. Mm. You know, what other love, mistakes, would that love, rudimentary <laughs> mistakes that should not have happened have love, happened. I would love that debate mm -hmm. to go on after the report mm. is tabled in parliament. Mm. Because then you will get the people's representatives. This was a bipartisan committee. This was not a committee of the MPP or the NDC. It's a bipartisan committee. I would love to hear the debate on the okay. report before we <laughs> take on other conclusions. <laughs> but the point I am making is that one cannot presume that Mr. Ajman Menu ignored all these processes because he was seeking a personal interest, which is what <laughs> the NDC <laughs> wanted to do. <believe. laughs> he why went out there, he wanted a personal interest, he, and he okay, ignored let, the process. Let's put the personal interest aside. We I should, think we the should. point is that certain mistakes were made, made. and you. somebody, somebody might be held accountable, accountable so for it. Breaches. And you so these have. other people also, who in previous administrations, they were probably not even given the chance so, to, so, so for you, you have, to hear an explanation. You have a qualification on these matters, willingly, mm -hmm. causing, mm -hmm. willingly. That means you are deliberately, mm -hmm. intentionally. That's knowing and so knowing. you can yes. mistakenly cause problems How? which are not willing. It is not the case that every time something goes wrong, mm -hmm. you willingly we make them that. go wrong in your personal interest. Okay. Please That's address the them. We need to wrap up on yes, this. But, but, but uh, we address need, the point of it is us very important. The, the it's very important to the reputation and personal well-being of the minister that he is not misunderstood in public. He will have the opportunity to defend himself on the floor of the house, I'm sure. When the, uh, the, the debate but, started yesterday, but it didn't really end conclusively. Yes, but, but that, that he is traduced in public. And that will also come. The NDC will not let that chance go. But the <laughs> assumption being made that this was done to sidestep all those uh, institutional like processes like deliberately, <laughs> deliberately <laughs> in his own interest is wrong, is palpably wrong, and it's not fair to the minister. If he's made mistakes, <laughs> and these mistakes were made in the course of duty because of the circumstances in which he found himself, I think at least his reputation should be given the benefit of the doubt. Sure. Quick one on the, on the amount. Hopefully we will retrieve it the must amount. Be it must be retrieved. It must be retrieved. Minus, the committee says minus the 20,000 
that uh, have been supplied. delivered I think it's already. Fair. Okay. Um, I think Dr. Ali, you said just, just, just a quick one. Yes. Um, I don't think we should just stop at retrieving the money. Mm -hmm. Something has to be done. So About that people just don't think that people punished. just don't think that you can do things and, and then, then you'll be asked to retrieve the money. That's that's it. That's it. We need to set a very serious precedent and make uh, those kind of things ill breaches of the law more costly. My, mm -hmm. my last point is the fact that reading what I have read about the minister, given his extensive experience as a, as a legislature and a member of the executive, and all these things happening and all those experiences doesn't come into play, make me to think that there was some there was an, uh, there was a motive other than the collective benefit of the people Absolutely. and i think that has to be proven all right i think or, the, or the, tested uh -huh, in i'm glad you said it has to be proven yes. so no, but i think now the face of it we need if, to, uh, to one question before you go let's go back on this if i the minister the minister know the minister know he knew and did not do it. So what are the reasons? It's been an interesting hot uh, 20 minutes so far. Uh, and it's the key point <clears throat> with me, Jifa Bampo. Follow the conversation. It's hashtag the key points. And we'll take a quick break and we'll come back. And when we come back, we take a look at the 29 years of the NPP. Stay with us.